Hey there! In this video I'm going to show and explain to you how I made this picture here of these two lions sitting on the beach in front of a romantic sunset. It was part of my drawing tutorial video about how to draw lions. If you want to know more about that topic, I recommend watching the tutorial video. In this time lapse, I will mainly focus on the other details and stories. The first lion that I'm sketching out is the one from Steven Universe. And I wanted to bring in a little bit of his cartooniness into this picture, but keep the anatomy still mostly realistic. You can for example see that I shaped the nose more like a heart and slightly exaggerated the forehead so that it looks closer to the bean shape that is lion's head. We look at him from behind and he's turning around his head to see what the cubs are doing. Cats can turn around the head quite significantly, that way they can clean themselves on more hard to reach areas too, while doing so with their back bends a bit to the side. The lioness at his side is just resting her head on his shoulder. Of course, that's more of a human than a lion thing to do, but I just want him to look cute. <laughs> Even their tails are entangled, how romantic. I am already starting with the second stage of the sketch, even though the cups are still missing. I wanted to figure out the shape of his mane at first, and also the order doesn't matter all that much. You can see that I made a lot of fine adjustments, better to do these during the sketching phase than later. And I can tell you, the mesh transformation is such a huge help. His mane is looking extra fluffy and large. Not quite the same size and shape as in the original version, it's a middle thing between reality and the cartoon. The mane looked too rectangular at first, so I changed its shape so that it is slightly more narrow down his back. Making sure that the hind legs are sticking out to the side in their sitting position. Oh, and flipping the picture is also very helpful to notice any mistakes in the proportions. Only a few months ago I got used to it and I really should have done so much earlier. Now here's the first little brat. <laughs> that one is looking up so I'm making sure that the snout is pointing straight forward. And the little paws as it is mischievously looking out of Lions' magical portal mane. A second cup on the other side, currently trying to climb inside. I didn't spend too much time with the proportions and details, since these are just two smaller parts of their bodies. Their poses just have to look cute and silly. I made the orientation of the strands follow the hair flow of lion's mane and also the angle at which the cups are positioned. Therefore, on the left the hair is pointing more to the side, while on the right it is rather centered. The cups were drawn in realistic proportions, but later you will see a little detail that hints at them being Lions' cups. Now the outlining. Pretty straightforward, just using black for the lines, at least for now. I tried to make the eyes more cartoony looking, but in the end I decided to change them. Drawing fur is still challenging to me, I made a tutorial video about it years ago, but it wasn't the best to be quite honest. But I improved in the meantime. Two things I keep in mind is that firstly I am adding gaps in between the lines, I am not trying to close off all the hair outlines. And that way I have more control over the density of lines and also it is easier and quicker to do. Secondly, I tried to put the hair together in strands. It is simply a matter of getting used to often change the curvature of the lines and avoiding drawing them all in the same way. Always mixing it up. You can see very clearly how much I struggled. All the times when I hit undo to redraw the lines, it was quite a process. To add to the fluffy feeling of his mane, I made sure to make the tips of the hair strands very curved, almost curly. Especially for long lines like these, it is incredibly helpful to turn the canvas so that it is easier for your hand to smoothly draw these curves. 
And I hope that all the turning and zooming in and out is not making you feel sick. I try to make it not too tasking for your eyes to watch, but if it still is, please let me know. One thing that I taught myself over the years is knowing when to add more detail and when to keep it simpler. If I'm drawing a picture that is supposed to be looked at as a whole and not zoomed in to see only parts of it, then adding a lot of details to small elements of the picture is unnecessary. When drawing digitally, you are prone to make that mistake since you can choose the resolution and zoom level freely. If you are drawing traditionally, then you would have to put a lot of extra effort into drawing super tiny details. One way to prevent that when using digital media is limiting the resolution to just what you actually need. So the maximum would be around what most screens nowadays can display. And that way the resolution itself will limit you in how small the detail you can draw can get. But of course, if you would need to upscale your drawing for some reason, then that would be quite difficult. I personally choose a resolution that is a bit larger, but also try to pay attention to the overall size of the individual elements of the picture. Zooming out to see the whole drawing is helpful for that matter. Well, let's get back to the actual drawing here. Here and there I added a few small strokes to add extra emphasis on the shape of their body, for example, along their spines. In order to indicate the muscle structure of their bodies, I drew the lines a bit bumpier. I didn't worry all too much about making it 100% anatomically correct, just has to look believable. The parts that are in the background I simply hatched out and don't really add that much more attention to them. Some laziness is allowed. Now I'm getting to the coloring. The first step for the technique that I'm using is to brighten up the lines to a medium gray and set their layer to multiply. And that way the lines pick up any color that is underneath them and makes it darker. This is a neat way to make the lines colored without coloring them by hand. But the problem is that I have to make sure that the colors don't just fill out the areas between the lines, but also directly underneath them. You can see me painting in this monochrome blue color. This will be the base layer and all the actual colors will be on top of that layer. It's just a simple way to make sure that I stay inside the outlines. There are several ways to paint that base layer. I chose the most straightforward way, which is painting it by hand. Probably not the most efficient way. I'm still experimenting a bunch with that method. So in the future you might see me using a different approach. After I'm done with the base layer, I simply change it to white. The first color didn't really matter. I just needed a color that is high enough in contrast so that I'm able to see if I'm painting out everything properly. And then I proceed by separating the cups and the mane from the base color layer by giving them extra base color layers. At this point, I'm still not using the actual colors, but only some that are still high in contrast. I am paying close attention to which lines belong to which colors. For example, here I only paint in the area under those lines that actually belong to the mane. Other lines, like the ones for his face, are omitted. And now I finally use the actual palette for the base colors. Lions' colors are of course the same as in the original version, and the others have the more realistic palette. Well, almost. As you can see, this little cub has a pink tuft for its tail. Moving on to the shading. I actually could have done this right after I was done with the first base layer. The order doesn't matter all that much. I deactivated the colors and only paint on white, because this way I can properly distinguish the brightness values and focus on the contrasts. This is also a method that I learned not that long ago. At the same time, I'm using a brush that is capable of color mixing and its density is fairly low, while the color I chose is very dark. This way I can adjust the values by smudging and pulling the already existing paint on the layer. 
At first I paint in the shades very roughly, and then progressively add more and more detail. You can also see that I don't just use grey, but colored shades. It is just a simple way to make your painting more colorful and therefore more interesting. The outermost areas and the area around the cups still stays relatively bright since these areas are going to be illuminated. For a lighting scenario like this sunset here, you have to use a very strong contrast. I can also use the shading stage to add more detail to the long hair strands. Also, I'm making sure that the light from the portals in Lions' mane is also reflect off the cubs and lion themselves. I used shading to give their bodies more detail too. It is very useful to add indications of bones and muscles underneath their skin. Lions have very short fur, so this kind of structure is very well visible. In general, I really like that kind of brush that I'm using because it gives the picture a very painterly kind of look. You can see all of these strokes and smudges similar to traditional paint. It adds a neat texture in my opinion. Since the light from the portals is emitted around the cups, the very front of their body parts is still going to be dark. There is no direct light coming from in front of their face or, well, their butt. When doing the shading, I want to make ridges and overlapping body parts extra dark to emphasize the shapes. For example, the areas between the torso and the hind legs, or the shoulder blades. Don't forget to add drop shadows too, like for Lions' mane or the overlapping tails. These kind of shadows are important to make the painting more three-dimensional looking. When I'm done with the shading, I reactivate the colors again and adjust the color of the shades. And here I'm moving on to the light that is coming from the portals. I wanted to make it really bright, so that it kind of looks like the cups are engulfed by the light. I establish a gradient of light around the portals. The light doesn't reach out that far though. Adding a couple of extra details, like the little reflections in the eyes, the nose, or the hair. Using this light, I can make the mane appear very silky and soft. By the way, the layer for the light is set to Glow Dodge. It's very useful for creating shiny and glowing looking effects, as the name suggests. I just have to make sure that I use a brush with very low density, since the glows get quite intense very quickly. The light layer is clipped above all the other layers, even the layer for the lines. This way I can create this glowing look around them, especially for the tips of his hair. Here a short interruption, because I noticed I haven't finished the paint job on the cubs and lioness yet. And I even forgot about the whiskers. This happens so often to me but they are so essential for their cat look. Ok, I'm moving on to the background. I simply got the color palette by picking out the colors from a photograph. So I have strongly saturated oranges and yellows, which become more and more desaturated for the shades and the parts of the sky that are further away from the sunset. Just splashing on some paint at first, and smudging it all together to establish the general composition. Adding the drop shadows of these two, which get less and less sharp as the distance increases. I didn't pay too much attention to the shape of the drop shadows, since the sand is going to be very bumpy and therefore distort the shape anyways. Dimmed down the background colors a bit and then moved on to adding more detail. I have to say that I previously did not have much experience in drawing beach scenes. I didn't know much about how to draw sea waves or sand. So you are going to see me trying to figure out how to make it look right. I added an orange color layer over the lines, set at multiply and low opacity. The sand was quite challenging to me because of the bumpy texture of it. I had to make sure that I added extra dark shadows right underneath the lion's tails and behinds. 
and I added some paw prints in the sand. That was especially hard to figure out. They required their own shading and highlighting and some of them were overlapping. Also getting the perspective right was important too. When I did the shades of the sand bumps, I made sure that they got progressively smaller the further away they were from the weir. And the frontmost part of the beach had no sand bumps, because the waves wash over it. Let me also talk about the water. To make it more interesting looking, I added a bit of extra color to it. You can especially see some purple in there. The waves I simply illustrated as bright, narrow, shaky lines, and they needed a lot of sparkles, of course. On the beach, you can see the soft waves coming in. At the very edges, there is this blurry looking foam from the last wave that rolled over the sand. The sunset reflections on the water were painted actually much wider than they normally would be. But I wanted to have this beautiful light surrounding the lions. It makes everything look even shinier. Added some textures as multiply layers to the painting and for the sand in particular. Using these seamless textures is an easy way to improve a digital painting. It is just important that these textures are very faint. Can't have enough sparkles, so I added some around the cups, on top of the waves and also the sand bumps to indicate the grains of sand particles sparkling in the sun. The tails were bothering me a lot in particular, because they kept on looking out of place in the middle of the dark drop shadow. So I really had to darken them up and adjusted sand textures underneath them. Adding my name tag and a vague vignette effect to make it look more photographic. But the painting is not done yet, because, duh, I still need some clouds. The sky looked way too empty. For those, I simply used a purple-ish gray and painted these long stretches of clouds. One of the easiest ways to paint them. I also still need to learn how to draw clouds in general. Well, it is certainly on my list of future tutorials. Added a bit of extra purple color to the clouds and some pink-ish reflections on the edges. And then I blended and smudged everything into a somewhat decent looking shape. And that's it, here's the final result once again for you to see. I gotta say that I'm pleased with how it turned out, even though there was a lot of blind experimenting. Well then, this was my first narrated time-lapse video. If you have any constructive feedback from me, then I would highly appreciate it. Alright then, please check out the description of this video for more information and links, and have fun drawing!